What's the word, y'all? Every time I'm trying to book somebody to come on to the show, I'll shoot a DM that say, hey, come on, come on and talk about your favorite team for 10 minutes or so. And then it ends up being a 20 minute, 30 minute conversation because it is going so well. I want to say shout out to Luke and Jonathan of the Six Man Show for taking the time to really talk Orlando Magic with me. There are a lot of really intriguing young cores around the NBA, but I really do like what the Orlando Magic have going on there. Paolo Bencaro is their first overall pick. Franz Wagner surprised me. I already got love for Wendell Carter. Jalen Suggs is there. You got Markel Fultz. Like, we can name drop young people in the court all day long. It's that deep. Y'all don't want to just hear me talk. Y'all want to hear the diehard core fans do it. So let's get into it. And I'm joined by Jonathan and Luke of the Six Man Show to talk all things Orlando Magic. How are you guys doing today? Good, bro. Appreciate the opportunity, man. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you, Luke? I'm good, man. Good. Excited. Been uh, watching you for a long time. So to uh, be able to join you and talk about our magic, it's a, it's a dream come true, man, really. You guys had a lot of people vouching, so I, I'm, I'm excited to have you here, man. A lot of people are like, we need these guys on, so here we are. Shout out to the Magic fam. Uh, we're, we can't do it without those guys, so uh, really appreciative and uh, happy to be here. It should be a very interesting season. I think in the last two years after, of course, you decided to blow it up, Vucevic coming to Chicago. So actually, we're connected in that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then Aaron Gordon going over to Denver. I think a lot of the things that have happened for Orlando – have been positives, right? Like Vucevic coming to Chicago, you guys, I, I'm on record. The moment that Trey went down and said the Magic did amazing there. So so fill me in. How are y'all feeling about my boy Wendell Carter and the seventh pick that turned into Franz Wagner? Well, we were we were gutted uh, the, the day of the Vooch trade. That was the first domino. We knew we were kind of trading some guys, but that made it abundantly clear that we were blowing up the, the current um, you know, roster that we had. But, you know, Wendell has looked great this season, obviously. And then, you know, Franz Wagner making first team all rookie. We're, we're doing all right. We're pretty happy with that trade now. Yeah, and, and still getting that pick to next year coming in as well, yeah. that 2023 pick. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. I mean, obviously, Wendell has been, well, affectionately, I call him Wendaddy. So so there's <laughs> that. But he uh, he's just been so good defensively uh, for us as well. And I think that's where maybe surprised me most. And admittedly, maybe wasn't as like keen to how good he was defensively or could be. Um, and there's just a lot to like about him and, and his ability to to guard and even switch sometimes. I mean, he's he's a, truthfully, he's, he's just very skilled. And yeah. although he's not like the traditional rim protector, um, his rim deterrence is, is really, uh, you know, kind of his style of rim protection. He just keeps guys out of the paint. So uh, he's been great for us. Yeah, that, that was the point I was actually about to make. Um, his undersize is, I guess, the word we can use for Wendell Carter for using him as a five. But when he was here in Chicago, he was basically saying to the media, I would love to play some four. He didn't say I wanted to be a full-time four, but some four. And he got to, we got to see that with Mobamba um, this season as well. And then you started to see Wendell Carter stretch. And I, I just fell in love with watching Wendell Carter. But I have to continue to prevent my Bulls fans from jumping off a ledge um, because there's no guarantee that we would have drafted Franz Wagner at number seven. Um, but, man, that, that guy looks so good his rookie season. I, I honestly think that even though he was all rookie and everything, people are underrating how good Franz Wagner was his rookie year. And now you add the first overall pick. Uh, just a lot of good things going on in Orlando right now. We're, 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 back, we're back up. That's what we like <laughs> to say about the Magic. Uh, it's been a rough decade, you know, post Dwight Howard. Anytime you trade a, you know, a guy who's going to be a Hall of Famer and should have been the NBA top 75, 100%. it takes a while to, to kind of get back to that. But with Paolo, Franz, Wendell, we're really excited about the future now. Yeah. And Kenny, if I can kind of jump in here and just refer to, I watched one of your videos here recently talking about, you know, the most underrated players on each team. Mm -hmm. And I think Dell is obviously a great choice uh, for that just because he was being overlooked solely because of guys, you know, like Franz and Jalen Suggs, just like paying attention to them in their first year in a magic uniform. But as far as like underrated goes, every time I hear people talk about the magic, they always fail to mention Markel Fultz. Mm. And, and it's irritating as a Magic fan because he obviously last year came in, you know, late in the season, right? And kind of looking at everything to do with last season, played 18 games, only played 20 minutes a game is what he ended up averaging at and still had almost 11 points, five and a half assists uh, and almost three rebounds. So, and the team was exponentially better with him on the court in terms of offensively, the record was much better. The sample size there was good at 18 games. It was fine, but just 
able to see kind of where Markel is also going to fit next year. I just want to throw that out there because there's a lot of people who don't even think about Markel Fultz and, and try to say maybe Cole Anthony should start over, right. over him or something. I just think it, it's Markel Fultz and it's really not even a question and like for Jonathan and I. I have a guy, um, Mike, he's, he's like my best friend, also co-host of my podcast. He has always held his Markel Fultz stock. And every time the Magic come up, he mentions basically what you said. is like the sample size is small, but when he was on the court, he was filling the stat sheet. And if I'm not mistaken, during those games, the Orlando Magic were like the, the one of the top three defenses in all of basketball in that 20-game span or something. So I understand exactly what you're saying um, with Markel Fultz being the guy. But this is one of my questions that I had to you guys. Because there are so many, so many talented young players on the roster between Jalen Suggs, Cole Anthony, um, Markel Fultz. Those are just guards right there. How do you find a way to get everybody's minute, everybody minutes so they develop to the point that you want them to? Yeah, we really don't envy Jamal Mosley, you know, the head coach when it comes to this. This is something that, I mean, we're really filling the offseason with at this point, talking about what the lineup is going to look like. You know, you add the number on pick. Paolo Bancaro, uh, you still have Jonathan Isaac hopefully coming back uh, you know, sometime this season. So it, it's really a good problem to have. I think mm-hmm. you just roll the ball out in training camp, let those guys compete. Jamal is going to put really the best five guys out on the floor to give us a chance to win. He's not shy about playing young guys or rookies. He proved that last year by starting Jalen Suggs and Franz Wagner on opening night. So, you know, the cream is going to rise to the top Mm -hmm. and, you know, we're we're hoping that these guys are competitive enough. And if they truly want to be those kind of guys in this league, you know, they'll find their way into the lineup. Yeah. And I was uh, just to add to that, really, like uh, we've talked about it and I've said it so many times, especially this offseason, last offseason, you start to do the math and you're like, you have so many guys on this roster that are not only young, but could have a debate for minutes. Mm-hmm. Right. Like you, you have a guy where like the magic are going to have a hard time trying to see where Terrence Ross fits into the lineup this year, who, when he's on, he's on, right. Hasn't had a great last couple seasons, but that's still a guy that you would think even on a contender, you could throw him out there from the, you know, out of, out of the bench as like a spark mm-hmm. and he'd be able to, to get everything going. So this team just has so many things going for them, but I just hope they don't have too many things going for them. Right. And I hope that it doesn't end. And I, I feel like it, it will end up being, you know, maybe after this season, the magic are able to have a lot of flexibility and cap uh, this next, next off season. And on top of that, you kind of will be able to see, like Jonathan said, cream rise at the top. And is there a world where they package just a bunch of young guys for a, you know, above average veteran that they can bring in? Because right now you've got like Gary Harris and Terrence Ross as veteran presence. Uh, and you're looking at them and Gary Harris is like, 27 26 yeah, like <laughs> he's not that old but he's the, he's old for this roster and i'm sure they 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 probably crack jokes about his his age with that roster you got right. so many dudes under 24 it's ridiculous but yeah like i said I, I i love that it's a problem for the magic but i hope it doesn't eventually cause problems you know when you get to that point where you have to make decisions well you mentioned packaging potentially some of the younger guys but you said a, a, a veteran I'm sure you guys have been asked this question. I've listened to Bill Simmons' podcast. I've listened to Zach Lowe's podcast. And Donovan Mitchell is a name that is thrown around a a ton. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jonathan has a Spider-Man tattoo. Uh, How (laughs) would you guys feel about that? Now now it feels like we're all just living in this fictional, hypothetical world because there's been no link between Donovan Mitchell and the Orlando Magic at all. But it seems like you guys would potentially have the pieces to make a Donovan Mitchell trade a reality. I mean, I guess it depends on what Danny Ainge is really thinking because some of the rumors I've heard are insane. Um, But could he be that connector between the youth and the win now that potentially helps y'all get back into the playoffs? I'll say not for eight first round picks. I don't <laughs> unless it's unless it's your guy Michael Jeffrey Jordan coming right. back. <laughs> I'm not giving up eight picks for anybody. But, um, yeah, I think Magic fans are really split on this. Obviously, we get both sides of the argument. Like, you bring in a guy next to Paolo, next to Franz, and you have, like, your trio of the future moving forward. And then a lot of us are also, and this is kind of where Luke and I stand, like, the front office has been very methodical about how they put this roster together so far and how they've drafted. Let's see this thing through, at least for another year. And some people are going to see the Magic won 22 games last year and think we're idiots. That's completely fine. We, we're fine with people thinking that we're idiots. We are. But my point is, a lot of us just kind of, we want to see what we have with some of these young guys. You still have 
Jonathan Isaac, we got to see if he's going to be healthy. Let's see what Markel Fultz looks like healthy. Let's see Jalen Suggs with a full offseason, if he can improve the handle and the shooting ability. Let's see if Cole Anthony can be consistent for the entire season. Started the last year really, really strong. Let's see if Chuma Okiki can get a little bit better. Like, let's mm. let's see what we've got. You know, and in this NBA, it seems like every year, year and a half, a guy of Donovan Mitchell's caliber is becoming available through trades. Whether it's a guy, you know, like Kevin Durant or you know, a team made a, a move for like a Rudy Gobert, Ben Simmons, James Harden. Mm-hmm. Every you know, year or so, a guy is coming up that's available in trade talks. So as good as Donovan Mitchell is, he's not going to be the last guy available through a trade for the Magic. Because let's be realistic. Orlando is in a huge free agency destination. And today, most of the NBA free agency really happens through trades. Guys sign a fat deal. They're two, three years into that. And they say, hey, I want to move now. And then, you know, teams are, are trying to trade and, and sign these guys to extensions. So Magic fans are kind of 50-50 on this. Mm-hmm. And and Kenny, I'm sure there's going to be more than Magic fans that are obviously watching, you know, this, this video, the segment, whatever it might be. And I just want to make something abundantly clear that Jonathan and I have came to accept, which is just because a star is available and maybe to you doesn't mean you should be available to them. Mm. Like this team at this point with how young they are, yes, you are going to be exponentially better getting Donovan Mitchell. But there's a few different arguments that I've heard that just like don't hold any water, which is, well, if Donovan Mitchell comes to the magic, his lack of defensive ability will be hidden up by hidden by guys like Jalen Suggs and Jonathan Isaac. And it's like, I don't think you guys understand what it's going to take to get Donovan Mitchell. Right. Like you're not, you might not be able to hide him anymore. Right. And it's like, then what are you, do you go back to being a six, seven seed for the foreseeable future until you're able to get another star and like coerce them to come to you and do like the whole Knicks thing, like what they're having to do right now, really. Mm-hmm. And what they've been trying to do for the last few years, I would rather just home grow. We saw it in the finals this last year, two homegrown teams really going at it in the finals. That's our dream. Obviously, like Jonathan has said, like people call us idiots and that's fine. <laughs> like we're the magic. We get it, dude. Like that, that is, it is what it is, but even more so like just stand firm, hold your cards close to the vest. Like this front office has done and continue to prove to be able to do. And I think we're going to be just fine. It's going to take a little bit more patience, but I trust this front office wholeheartedly. So you, you mentioned the homegrown teams and the way you become one of those homegrown teams is to draft. Well, first overall pick in this year's draft, you guys got what seems like an absolute stud. Now, I was there for the first two games of his summer league career, and no matter who was on the court with him, Paolo just looked like the man. He, he looked like an NBA player amongst college players. Were you guys team Paolo? Because it seemed like everybody had it written in, in, in pen that it was going to be Jabari Smith, and out of nowhere, a magic marker came out of it, or a magic eraser came out and took that pen away. So did you guys hype yourself up for Jabari, ended up being Paolo? How are y'all feeling about first overall pick? I will say the night of the draft, I'll let Luke speak for himself, but the night of the draft, I was legitimately fine with Paolo, Chet, or Jabari. We've been talking this entire draft cycle about how it was three guys at the top and then everyone else. And I had talked myself into any of those guys, but I had like very specific disclaimers. You only draft Jabari if you're confident that he's going to evolve into this number one option, a la like a a guy like Paul George didn't come into the league necessarily with a handle but has now developed one of the deepest bags, you know, we've mm, ever seen. Bag talk. Not saying Jabari is going to be Paul George, but if you think that is his projection, then I'm good with you taking him at number one. If you think Chet is going to be what we saw in his summer league debut, you know, the 23 points, hitting threes, blocking everybody, and you're not worried about his frame, then you go ahead and take uh, Chet. If you wanted the surest, safest, most surefire guy, you went with Paolo. That being said, we, we, we were drinking that Jabari Kool-Aid. It was, it was all in the news. It was all over the place. We had talked ourselves into that being the pick. And we're happy to say we were wrong. Like, Jabari is not Paolo, at least not right now. This front office gets paid millions of dollars a year to make decisions like this. And Paolo is the guy. And we are all in on Paolo. Super excited for him. The man's going to be lifting the LOB in Orlando <laughs> sometime soon. Yeah, we hope. We hope. We hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I like Jonathan said. Like we we were open to anybody, right? And we have really adopted the the really just the I don't know if it's a mantra, but just like the the idea, the concept of we trust this front office until we like they lose our trust. 
and they have done some great things. They have done really great things, like the the Bulls trade as well, being one of them. Like you, how how, and then drafting Franz Wagner. Like there is just so much trust that we have in this front office. But I will say that I was heavily leaning Jabari. Mm-hmm. Like that was my that was my 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 preference and everything. But at the end of the day, my you know what I kept telling Jonathan and everybody and all of our listeners was, whoever it is, I'm going to be cool with it. I don't, I don't have any type of issue with it. I'll trust that they, you know, made the right decision. So that's kind of where we were at. And then, you know, recorded that night at Amway and was able to talk about where, you know, where we thought Palo fit in. And it just kind of comes down to it. Like maybe we overthought the the draft process, right? Like maybe we overthought well, who was going to be the guy. Your team is terrible for 10 years and is the la- laughing stock of the NBA. The last thing that you want to do is... <laughs> Hey, that's the, the Kings, pick. all right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. yeah. There's a lot of stress with having a first overall pick. I, I know that. Well, I guess I don't. The last time well, we had the yeah. first overall pick, it was pretty easy. Go with the hometown kid, Derrick Rose. Yeah. But I know how much work it goes into making sure you have the guy because – Throughout history, having a first overall pick hasn't meant that you got the best guy, you know, right. long term. Um, but Paolo just just looks so much better than everybody else out there. And I know there are a lot of people watching this video. I'm not saying you two specifically because you're you're down in the weeds of Orlando Magic fandom that have given up on Jalen Suggs already. I met Jalen Suggs at a at a shoot. They flew me out to California for this Chipotle shoot interviewing the, the draft prospects. When when I tell you he was the most polished interview I've ever had, and I've mm-hmm. talked to, I don't know, at this point, 50 NBA players and athletes in the world, he was the most polished guy. A lot to be desired, but you get to the defensive side of the ball, he gave it his all. And you mentioned him, you mentioned Markel, you mentioned Jonathan Isaac, who eventually we hope is going to play basketball someday. You mentioned Wendell Carter. The defense is about to be there. And at the end of last year, on my channel, I said if I if I was going to pick a team that I think will have the the most um, the biggest jump going into next year, this is before the first overall pick. <laughs> I picked the Orlando Magic. It was between mm-hmm. between them and Detroit. You know, Detroit has a lot going on there as well. But I picked the Orlando Magic before Palo, and I'm just super excited to see if that's going to be true. Would you guys be disappointed if somehow you did end up only winning like 22 games again this season, or do you do you guys set the expectation higher now? Denny, if we win 22 games next oh. season, fire the coach, the front <laughs> office, trade everybody, start over. Yeah. Yeah. This team was so injury riddled last year. You know, Jalen Suggs missed a ton of time. Cole Anthony mixed, missed chunks of time. Towards the end of the season, the Magic were trying to lose games. So Wendell missed some time as well. Mm-hmm. Markel Fultz, you only have him for 18 games. Jonathan Isaac misses the entire season. If this team is anywhere near relatively <laughs> healthy, this team should not be anywhere near 22 wins. Like 30, I would be like, okay, the season didn't go perfectly, but that's, you know, that's understandable. But we are expecting that if everyone is healthy and things go right, we should be at least flirting with the play-in come March and April. We might not make the Mm play-in, but you should be playing for something those last couple of months. Yeah, and you you look at the standings. That's really what it comes into, Kenny. Is like not not you you so often get caught up in this like, oh, I think we could win this amount of games, but you completely forget to think about everybody else in your conference yeah, of like right. who also is having to win games. You look at the East last year. Was it Charlotte like 41, 42 wins as the ten spot? That's if the match would go from from twenty two to to forty one. That's ridiculous, and you don't see that very much, right? Mm-hmm. Like the Knicks of a couple seasons ago who made that huge jump. And that's really as rare as it really can get. Right. So I don't know that that, that happens, but if but, it's 22 wins, I it's over. Like we're the podcast. I'm about to argue always, with my co-host here on Kenny's on Kenny show. I'm sorry, it. Luke, wouldn't you agree though, that if this magic team, even before Paolo last season was healthy, 30 games easily. Yeah. Healthy so 30, 30 to 41. Isn't that big of a jump? 22 healthy. to 41, I get and it. We're, but like, we're talking let's get yeah, the context here. J.I. and Markel both healthy. Markel not on a 20-minute restriction either, playing 18 games. Absolutely. I think this team wins 30. Kenny, do you we're we're over in Magic Land, right? And yeah. we say it so many times, like we are biased. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we do a magic podcast. We only own magic jerseys. Like that, that's who what we do. <laughs> we record twice a week. Of course, we're biased. It yeah. would be boring if we weren't. But so to ask you, Kenny, do you think 
the magic like what what do you have expectations have you thought about the magic at all in, in terms of what this team looks like fully healthy in terms of what how big can that win jump even be so so yeah i do have some expectations but with that said if they are disappointing in a way i'm not really upset about it because the core is so extremely young palo year one window card in what year five at this point um so i have per my own personal expectations but losing in this season don't seem like a bad thing considering how deep the 2023 draft could potentially be little I, Paolo Victor Wembanyama you know right, exactly that I I honestly while that would be great Kenny no I don't uh, want that <laughs> going through this last season and the last few as long as we've done the podcast right like it has been it is miserable this last year was miserable to be like man you ready to record tonight I'm like nah not really <laughs> <laughs> Like, Let's talk about this 15 win team at the all-star break. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so there, I, I don't know, like obviously the reward would be great, but we got burned by the lottery so badly, uh, you know, uh, even two seasons ago, they're getting the fifth pick. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like, do we really want to do that again? I'm not a believer in the lottery. Even after getting yeah. the first pick, even after the magic have an incredible track record of the first pick. Right. I mean, you've hit on every first pick you've gotten. So I just, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I want to put myself through that again. <laughs> Fellas, I appreciate you stopping by to talk some Orlando Magic. Let the world know where they can find you. So, yeah, you guys can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Sixth Man Show. You can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash The Sixth Man Show. And just want to shout out our, our listeners that vouched for us on Kenny's channel here to get us on here. But we are, like, internally grateful to Kenny and everything that you do. Thanks for bringing on Thank small you. creators for this. Uh, massive fans of yours. Just keep doing what you're doing, man. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, guys.